Why the hell did I skip this anime last year? What is wrong with me? Land of the Lustrious is a 2017 action drama anime based on the manga of the same name written by Haruko Ichikawa. Oh, I actually got it right this time. I'm learning. The anime centers around a world inhabited by jewels that take human form. Our main protagonist is Fos, who is the weakest of them all and considered useless among their peers. They are given the assignment to create a natural history encyclopedia and befriends the outcast Cinnabar, wanting to do everything they can to help them. At the same time, these jewel people are at war with beings called the Lurariums, who try to take the jewel people up to the moon. What most people thought would just be an average or poor CG anime, which is the reason I didn't watch it till now, became one of the greatest anime of 2017 that took everybody by surprise. It now has a cult following that is only getting bigger and bigger. So what made the CG show so spectacular and catch everybody off guard? Let's find out. Positives first, of course. First of all, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the CG animation in the show is amazing. That is a sentence I thought that I would never say, but here we are. While there is of course moments where the CG animation becomes typical CG animation in anime, for the most part, it is really pleasing to the eyes. And I think the reason that this is is because the direction and cinematography isn't done like a regular 2D animated anime. When CG shows do this, it comes across as clunky and a little messy. But since Land of the Lustrious is shown differently, the CG animation matches with the anime's story and tone. I also like what the CG animation creates in the show, like the reflectivity of the character's hair. It also adds to some of the wonder and new discoveries that we get throughout the anime. This anime proved that CG animated anime can be exceptional with its animation, just as long as we don't do another Berserk again. <sighs> I especially love the CG animation when it comes to the camera work in some of the action scenes. For example, the scene where Daya is running back home in a hurry took my breath away. The way the camera follows their movements and speed, the backgrounds are consistent, and the way the CG animation makes it really pop made the scene very effective. Another example is when Daya is hiding from one of the unique Lurariums. They are creeping and crawling behind cover to try and find a way while the Lurarium is trying to find them. The camera follows Daya's movements here too, keeping everything to ground level, and we don't see the Lurarium unless Daya sees it. This makes the scene become very tense and suspenseful, making us feel like Ryo right there with Daya trying to avoid the monster. These two scenes were very effective in putting us in the moment. Now there were a lot of different characters, and only some of them get some full attention and development throughout the season. And while I like the characters that we meet a lot, it isn't because of stuff like their personalities or their designs or even what they go through throughout the show. It's the relationship between the characters that makes me really like them. For example, the relationship between Fos and Cinnabar is great. The relationship between Daya and Bort is great. The relationship between the two Amethyst twins are great. Whether their relationship is of siblinghood, friendship, companionship, or even romantic in some cases, each relationship helps us learn more and more about the characters. Something that I love that the anime does with the characters is that it has consequences after certain events. When an anime is in danger or is killed off, it's not the character that I'm going to miss, but the relationship that they have with another character. I want to know more about these characters through their relationship with someone else and how it grows and changes over time. For example, if a character loses something important to them, they don't get it back, and they are forever changed because of it. Everything isn't just put back to normal by the end, the effects are permanent. Also when a character dies or is captured by the Lurariums, they stay gone throughout the rest of the show. This consistency with consequences makes the stakes so much higher and gets more tense when things go wrong. That got me more invested in the story and characters throughout the anime's runtime. Lots of anime don't have lasting consequences to stuff like this. <laughs> but this anime does, and it's better because of it. Another cool thing about the characters is that they don't really have a specific gender. Yes, their mannerisms are feminine, same with their designs, and the fact that women voice the characters, but in the show, gender isn't really a thing. They refer to each other by saying they or them. The only time gender is used is when referring to their master, who is human. I find that to be pretty cool. You got a show full of non-binary characters. That's kind of neat. The last positive I have is about the world of Land of the Lustrious itself. I always love when a show or a movie introduces us to a world that we want to live in. 
Yes, even though there is the constant threat of Lurariums, I would love to live in this world. And one of the reasons I love it so much is because of the mystery behind it. Most of the characters don't know the reason the world is why it is, and our main character, Fos, is the one who comes to discover most of its secrets. When they learn something new, so do we, and it adds more and more to the world's lore and how it came to be. I love discovering a new clue, the cracking the mystery behind the origin of this world, and got me to want to watch more and more episodes. I, of course, won't spoil anything, but there are some secrets and developments that are revealed that are truly fascinating to me, and it makes me want to discover more of its secrets. Lastly, I do have two very small negatives, but honestly, they're just kind of nitpicks. First is that the anime has a very slow beginning. It takes about four episodes for things to really get going and for you to get a sense of the anime as a whole. After that though, it's an amazing journey, but the first four episodes are kind of slow. Not bad in any way, but not the best either. Another negative is that this anime suffers the same problem that most anime based on a manga suffer, not having a concrete ending. Land of the Lustrious doesn't really have an ending. It just ends. It leaves the story open for a possible second season, but if I'm looking at this anime just for its 12 episodes alone, I want a better conclusion. Something satisfying to leave me on. But again, these two negatives are really just nitpicks. In the end, Land of the Lustrious is a surprisingly engaging and beautiful show to watch. Through its great use of CG animation, the characters and their relationships, and the world itself that the show creates, it just sucks you in and makes you want more. It's an anime that most people miss because of how CG animation and anime is perceived, but trust me when I say that it is worth the watch. This is an anime that I'll remember for a long time and desperately wish for a second season. I'm going to give Land of the Lustrious an A. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you guys liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and comment on any anime that you'd like to see me review. If you want, it's up to you. I don't care. I do. Catch you later.